Mr. President, yesterday the President of Armenia delivered a statement for, at the general debate, full of usual set of falsifications, distortions, and misinterpretations in which he attempted once again to lecture others about principles and values which in reality his government disregards and opposes. The international community still recalls brutal massacres by invaded Armenian troops on Azerbaijan civilians, including children, women, and the elderly, as well as the establishment of the military dictatorship in Armenia after murdering the entire political elite of the country and killing a number of peaceful demonstrators protesting rigged presidential elections. It is well known that Armenia unleashed the war and used force against my country and occupied almost one-fifth of territory of Azerbaijan, including Nagorno-Karabakh region and seven adjacent districts, carried out ethnic cleansing on the seized areas by expelling about one million Azerbaijanis from their homes and committed war crimes and crimes against humanity during the conflict. The international community has consistently deplored it in the strongest terms the use of force by Armenia against Azerbaijan and the resulting occupation of its territories. In 1993, the United Nations Security Council adopted resolutions 822, 853, 874, and 844, and 884, condemning the occupation of the territory of Azerbaijan and reaffirming respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Azerbaijan and the inviability of its internationally recognized borders. In those resolutions, the Security Council also confirmed that Nagorno-Karabakh region is part of Azerbaijan and demanded immediate, complete, and unconditional withdrawal of the occupying forces from all occupied territories of my country. Other international organizations had adopted a similar position and resolution. It is a landmark judgment in case of Chiragov and other versus Armenia, the European Court of Human Rights held Armenia fully responsible for the occupation of territories of Azerbaijan and violation of the rights of Azerbaijan internally, displa internally displa displaced persons. In total disregard to this judgment and the norms and principles of international law, Armenia continues its efforts aimed at further consolidation, consolidating the status quo of the occupation by altering the physical, demographic, and cultural characters of the occupied territories and to deny the right of hundreds of thousands of Azerbaijan and its forcibly displaced persons to return to their homes and access to their properties. On 20, September 26 of this year, President of Armenia made even more remarkable statement referring to the occupied Nagorno-Karabakh region of Azerbaijan as a part of Armenia. We categorically reject this fallacious and biblical statement which testified to Armenia apparent disregard of its obligations under the UN Charter and international law represents a yet another admission at the highest level of the aggression perpetrated by the Republic of Armenia against the Republic of Azerbaijan and demonstrates how the leadership of Armenia is far from engaging in constructive search for peace. In that statement, Armenian president even boasted his country to be one of the most militarized areas of the world. Against this background, Armenian speculations on confidence-building measures are curious to say the least. In fact, the real reason for lack of confidence are Armenians over territorial claims to neighboring countries, aggression against Azerbaijan, occupation, and ethnic cleansing of its territories, denial of its responsibility for atrocity, uh, atrocious crimes committed in course of the conflict, oppo opposition to direct contacts between Azerbaijani and Armenian communities of Nagorno-Karabakh region of Azerbaijan, and reluctance even to cooperate seriously on the issues of missing persons. In reality, for an effective confidence building, it is crucial first and foremost to implement without further delay the plan of withdrawal of the armed force of Armenia from the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. As for the ideas of elaborating a mechanism for investigation incidents along the line of contact, we should note that the major cause of these incidents is the continued unlawful presence of Armenian troops in the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. Such an investigation mechanism must be an integral component of the above-mentioned withdrawal plan. Otherwise, it will serve only for consolidating the status quo, which even the presidents of OSC, Minsk Group co-chair countries, have repeatedly stated to be unacceptable and unsustainable. The Nagorno-Karabakh region has always been and will remain an available part of Azerbaijan. We will never reconcile with the seizure of our territories. The conflict can only be resolved on the basis of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Azerbaijan within its internationally recognized borders. 
the military occupation of the territory of my country does not represent a solution and shall never produce a political outcome desired by Armenia. The sooner Armenia reconciles with the, this reality, the earlier the conflict will be resolved, and countries and peoples in the region, of course, including of Armenia, one will benefit from the prospects of cooperation and economic development. Azerbaijan is the most interested party in Sunnah's negotiation settlement of the conflict. However, if the negotiations fail to bring as an outcome the complete and conditional withdrawal of Armenian troops, Azerbaijan will compel to use its inherent right of self-defense guaranteed under the Article 51 of United Nations Charter to ensure restoration of its sovereignty and territorial integrity within the international recognized border. Azerbaijan highly appreciates the principal stance of the state member states of the United Nations that has been repeatedly expressed on issues that are of utmost importance for my country and pertaining to its sovereignty and territorial integrity. We count on the continued resolve of the international community in defending uh, the purpose and principles of UN Charter, as well as strong solidarity with the just position of Azerbaijan. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Azerbaijan.